Hello and welcome to Console Cowboys. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at creating an exploit script for our cold storage vault contract from section one, which was your homework that you had to do in manual Python. So we're gonna show how to script it in Brownie, which will be much simpler than what you had to do for homework. And we'll show the value of Brownie and how this script can get created so that you have something maybe to show a client if you're doing a penetration test. Here's a script that exploits that to proof of concept. So if that all sounds good to you, follow me on Twitter in the description below and also give this video a like. Now on the screen, I have our GitHub here and I have that in the link description as well. And we have our cold storage vault contract. Now in here, we have a couple different functions, which I'll explain. So we have a lock function that will lock, set the is locked variable to true. And then we have an unlock function, which will check the passwords and make sure they're equal and then set it to false. Now you'll notice here that it's doing a KeyCAC 256 ABI encoded pact on each end of this comparison. And just for a little background here, if you're not super familiar with Solidity, in Solidity, you can't do a direct string comparison like, you know, password in quotes equals password in quotes because it just won't work. You have to encode it and then on both ends, compare the results. And then you're able to do that string comparison. Just in case you weren't familiar with that, I wanted to explain that. Now we have a withdraw all function in here, which will allow you to grab everything from this contract, this dot balance, and send it to the person who calls this withdraw all. So obviously that's the objective here. We wanna grab all of the Ethereum from this contract and send it to us. But the problem is we have a require statement here that says is locked equals false. So it's gonna check that you unlocked it here first and set it to false. But when we create the contract and deploy it in our constructor, it automatically sets is locked to true and then it has the password here that's sent in. So we don't know what this password is. So hopefully that all makes sense. Now let's hop into Visual Studio Code. We'll create a Brownie project and we'll build out a script to hack this. So that way you understand the whole process here. And you already know how to do everything in here or you should in Brownie because we've already covered it. Now it's just about building out that proof of concept code you can give a client. So let's get rocking. So all I did here was I created a folder called vault on my desktop and we are going to run a brownie init in here and that will create all the folder structures for brownie. And then what we wanna do is put our contract right in here. So we'll say storage.soul. We can name it whatever we want, of course. And then grab this contract, copy it, and we will paste it right into our contract. I'm gonna save that. And then what we need to do is we need to note the name of the contract. So it's cold storage vault. And we wanna create a script in here that we're gonna run in order to interact and make our proof of concept. So we'll just call this deploy again. You can call it whatever you want. From Brownie import accounts. And then we're gonna import our smart contract. So we'll hit paste here, and that's our cold storage vault. Now from here, we wanna create our main function and we need to do a few things. So we need to deploy the contract. So we'll deploy contract, and then we need to get our password, right? So get password, and then we need to unlock and withdraw the contract, right? So that's kind of our attack portion. Another thing we're gonna need here is a few accounts to work with. So we'll import two of our accounts. We'll say account zero equals account zero, account one equals accounts one. Now we'll use account zero to deploy the contract. We'll use account one as the external attacker to attack the contract and get all of the Ethereum out of the contract. Now let's turn these into comments that we're gonna use in, right before the function so we know what we're doing and we'll create a main function right now. And this is gonna be our driver function that calls all of these other pieces of the equation. So we'll say define main. And in main, we're going to do all three of those items and send it off to get processed in different functions. 
So the first thing that we're going to do, deploy our contract. So we'll say our cold storage equals, and we'll call this deploy cold storage vault. So I'm just going to paste this in here so I don't screw it up. And we need to create that as a function. And when we call this function, it'll bring us back a variable that allows us to communicate with the contract, right? So this is going to be our deploy contract. So we'll say define. And in here, we need to deploy the contract. Now, if we look at the contract really quick, we'll see that we need to pass in a password and it's also payable. So we're going to send some value with it, which is the Ethereum that we're going to hack out of it. So those are the things that we need to do. So let's come back here and do that. So I'm going to paste in this and then explain what it's doing. You should be basically familiar with all of it. Um, we've done all of it, but this is together a little bit more. So we've sent value before, and I believe we sent variable as in functions in Brownie. So here's what we got here. We have our cold storage vault that we're going to return back to main, and that's going to allow us to communicate with the contract. And we're going to get that by saying cold storage vault, which is what we imported here, the name of the contract, dot deploy. Then we're going to send in a password of test123. Then we're going to say we're going to do this from account zero. And then we are going to send in a value here. I don't know if this is 30 or 3 ether. It really doesn't matter. You have to count the zeros there. But that's what we're doing. We're sending that value into the payable function. We're using account zero and we're using the password test123. Now, once that is done, we need to return that back to our main function. So we'll just say return cold storage. And then now we have that variable that allows us to communicate with this smart contract. So what else do we need to do? Well, we need to get that password out of memory. We know how to do that. We've done that multiple times. So let's do that. So let's create something where we get our password back. So we'll say password equals, and we're going to name this one get private password and we're going to send in that variable that we just grabbed to communicate with the contract so up here we'll just say define and we're going to send in that variable and then we're going to grab it out of memory and send it back to main for use now as you know in order to grab storage out of memory we need to use web3 which means we need to import web3 so we're going to say import web3 lowercase from web3 uppercase and then we need to create the variable for web3 that we're going to use that connects to the blockchain and allows us to use that so we'll say web3 equals uppercase web3 which is what we imported here our http provider and we're going to connect to the local host at 8545 which is what you'll see scrolling on the screen when we actually deploy this so with that, we can now grab stuff out of memory. So let's do that. The first thing we need to do is cast the contract variable to a string to get the contract address that we're going to use. So we'll say our contract address equals the string casting of our cold storage vault variable, which points to our smart contract. Then we can use that to communicate to the contract and grab the memory storage. We're going to say password equals web3.eth.getStorage at. You already know how to do this. And we're gonna put the contract address in here that we had, and then we're gonna decode it. And we're gonna grab the first part of memory here. So the second one. So if you look at this, we have a bool variable, which should be in the first slot, which is zero. And then our password should be in that second slot, which is number one. So let me tab this in here. So we get rid of that error. So now we have the password back. We want to make sure we have the correct password. So we'll say print password just to take a look at what we got before we go any further. And we'll deploy this and see what comes back. So we'll say brownie run scripts. And this is our deploy script. So let's see what happens here. Oh, and I do have a syntax error here that's just on the import. So there's a billion different ways to import from Python 2 and 3. So it's actually from web3 import capital web3. So if you did that wrong, fix that and we'll run that again. But one thing to notice here 
is right here attached to our PC client listening at localhost at 8545, which is why we're making that connection here with Web3 because when we use Web3, we need to connect to our local blockchain to grab that value out of memory. Let's run this again and see what happens. Okay, so now we see our transaction is sent and we deployed it and then we grab the value out of memory and it is the test one, two, three there, so that's perfect. So now what we wanna do is we wanna send that value back to main so that we can use it to unlock the account. So let's do that. So instead of doing this print here, we're just gonna say return password. Technically this should work now and we should be able to exploit the smart contract. Now, if you send in that test one, two, three directly as a string, it'll work. However, the way that we're doing it here is we're grabbing that password directly and then passing it back and then using what we grabbed. And I know from experience that what we get back has a whole bunch of extra characters we can't see when we print that out. Now I had to do a lot of weird debugging stuff to figure that out initially. And I can make another video showing you how I did that. If you want, just put that in the comments below or hit me up directly and I'll show you that. But essentially what we need to do is we need to take that password value we got back and we need to parse out the alphanumerics into it up until a space and send that as the password to get rid of the garbage on each end of it. That way we don't run into issues where, you know, when we do the encoding of the password and compare it to our password, it's not something else, right? So with that, we need to import our E in order to do that. And like I said, if you want me to show you that debugging and how I figured that out, just let me know. I'll, I'll run through a video on how I did that. It's a little complicated and it'll make this video of just scripting way more complicated than it needs to be. So what we're gonna do now that we parse that out is we are going to unlock and withdraw all. So we're going to create that function here. We're gonna say define, unlock and withdraw all. And in here, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check the value of is locked to see if the contract actually is locked. And then we are going to check our balance as well so we know what our starting balance is on our account one so that way we know that our exploit worked at the end if it's higher. We can easily do that with a print cold storage dot is locked and a print account one dot balance. Now the is locked is just a function within the contract that we went over. This should give us the value back of true or false and then we should get the current balance of account one. So let's run this. What we got back is true, the contract is locked and this is our value. So let's grab this value and let's put it right up here just so that we know what that is and we can compare it afterwards. So this is our value. And then let's take our is locked value in an actual variable instead of just printing it out here so we can use it to make decisions. So we'll say is locked equals cold storage dot is locked. So that'll grab us that value. And then we'll say if it is locked, let's print out something saying that here's our current value and we're going to try to unlock it. So we're gonna say print F string here, locked, and that'll give us that back that value of true preparing to unlock. Just so we have a little script here when we're giving it to the client that shows the process on the screen. And you could also do this with assert statements and stuff like that. I just prefer this, it's more intuitive to me. I'll show you how to do test stuff later on. So now let's grab the value out of memory and let's set it to unlocked. So let's do that. So we'll say cold storage dot unlock and we'll send in the password and we'll do it from account one. And that should unlock it. And then once it's unlocked, we should be able to check the value again. So we'll say is locked equals cold storage dot is locked. And what we'll do here is print is underscore locked. And that should give us our new value to show that we unlocked it. So now let's run this again down here. And now it says that it's not locked. We got the false back. Now, just to show you what I was talking about before, if we were to comment this out and not do our regex values in here, you'll see that this will actually fail. I just wanna show that to you. 
And then, like I said, I can make you a debug video if you wanna know how I figured that out. So right there you say, true, it's still locked, right? Because what happened was we had a bunch of gobbledygook in there on top of that password around it. And when we did this comparison here and we did you know, the hash of my password and we compared that over here with the hashed value, it just said, hey, this one doesn't match this one because there's extra characters in there we couldn't see. But when we did the hash of it, obviously it's a different hash. Just so you understand that. Now let's pull that back out there. So let's keep doing our regex, so that way it's working. And we'll hop back in here. Now, if this actually came back and was true still instead of false, we need to check for that because that means we sent in the wrong password. So if is underscore locked, we'll just print out incorrect password, right? Because we didn't actually unlock it. So there was something wrong there. Maybe we didn't know above that about the regex so that it didn't work. And this will give us that indication of that. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say else, you know, if it actually is unlocked, we want to grab the value from this contract and withdraw it to ourselves because now we can access that function. So let's do that. I'm gonna paste in a few things here, which are just print statements, just to give us indication of what's going on. So we're gonna say, Contract is unlocked because we got to this else statement. And then we're gonna say, here's our starting balance, account one dot balance, which is what we printed up here and we pasted, just so we have it right there for us and we can see the difference. And then we're gonna say, hey, we're gonna to try to withdraw all the funds. Now, how do we withdraw all the funds? We do it with that withdraw all function. In order to do that, we need to call the contract with cold storage and we'll do our withdraw all. And we'll just say that we're doing this from our account one. So our account one balance should now be updated. So let's print out the new balance right under that. And this should give us an indication if it worked. So we'll say print F string here, balance after attack. And we need our account one dot balance. And this should be a new balance that took out all of those, you know, was it 30 or three ether? I'm not hundred percent sure. I'd have to count those zeros again, but let's do that and see what happens here. All right, so it looks like it worked. So we said, okay, contract is no longer locked. We got a false. So we're gonna do a contract unlocked. Here's our starting balance. We're gonna withdraw all the funds. We did a transaction here to withdraw all. And then we check the balance after attack in account one, which is the second account. We now have 103 or 1,030. So that attack did work. And this is a full script that does all of that. So what I wanted you to understand in this video is that you can take Brownie and create a whole proof of concept script to simplify your Python and have something to show a client exactly how you exploited something as a proof of concept. And also, like I said, if you want me to show how I did that debugging stuff, just let me know. Hopefully you learned a lot in this video. If you did, give it a like, give it a subscribe, and share it out with your friends. You can also follow me on Twitter in the link below. Cheers, and in the next one, I'll show you how to write some test scripts with this if you wanna go that direction with the assert statements.